YouTube, what's good? It's your boy, Leak Auto Repair. Before y'all get any further in my fucking video, sorry for pointing my finger in the fucking camera, but um, make sure I hit that like button. Make sure y'all subscribe. Just like that, let's push Leak the 2K subscribers. Dre, uh, not Dre, uh, you wanna be on my YouTube video? Yeah. Hey, he y'all can get to know him later. All right, so enough talking. Y'all hit that like button, subscribe, thank you. All right, cool. This right here, what y'all see is a uh, 2008 Kia Sereno. Um, on this one, pretty much what I'm gonna be doing is uh, valve cover gaskets, um, both banks. And I know by now, you did one side, but you can't do the other. You can't get the other bank off on the passenger side because the intake manifold is in the way. So I'm going on lunch break in a few minutes, but when I come back and my parts get here, I'm gonna show you guys how to fucking change the valve cover gaskets. And I already got some shit apart, but I'm gonna let you know what you need to fucking remove. And I ain't gonna like baby you through this, but I'm just gonna let you know what you need to remove and how to properly put the gasket on. And that's the fuck it. So let's wait till I get back. Chad, yeah, you gonna be in my video? My YouTube video? No. Took off the uh, engine cover, held in with uh, 10 millimeter bolts. So that's pretty simple. Excuse the rough voice. It is uh, 8 a.m. in the morning for me, 8 8.08 to be exact. Take off that little space air duct device thingy me jig it's held in with 10 millimeter bolts <clears throat> i don't even know what that thing is it's like an ugly black box so um what it looks like i'm doing right now and i got a a pick a uh, pick look like a dental pick i'm taking off a locking tab i'm pushing it back and um got to push in the tab and pull the connector out so pretty much i'm taking off the connectors for the ignition coils so it's three of them you will be removing so like i said i had to get in between to lift up that tab because it is so like damn near like like rock hard it's not soft plastic after a while old age and mileage and shit so what i'm doing right now looks like i'm taking off the uh connectors for the uh injectors there are three of them and I was able to work them off with a uh, needle nose. Be careful not to press them too hard because, like I said, the plastic is not soft. It is hard plastic. That's why the tabs are hard to come off, and I had to use a pick and a uh, needle nose pliers. So I'm working all three of them off. And take your time. It's not hard. If you pay attention, watch the vid, you'll be okay. And it looks like right now, um, what am I doing? There are, uh, I guess, the um, oxygen sensors, the O2 sensor connectors. Um, for both rear O2 sensors, go ahead and remove those. They have two connectors as well. And, yeah, there's a locking tab on it. Lift it up and press in a tab. Like a safety lock or some shit like that to stop the connector from coming off um and there's one more um following on the wire that's what i'm doing right now because i believe there's one more uh I forget exactly what that sensor is for um just go ahead and delete that i mean not delete it but take it off maybe for o2 sensor i'm not sure but <clears throat> whatever i don't care just take the fucking connector off so after you get all your bolts and shit off or whatever, you're able to lift up that whole harness at first, but you can't because there's more to it. So right now I'm taking off a couple of 10 millimeter bolts that hold the, you know, for the front O2 sensors and shit. I think, no, it's not for the O2 sensors. I'm sorry. I could be wrong. Probably. Whatever. Take off the fucking connectors and there's a, a bracket too. And you're going to take off this connector. I'm um, touching right now. Yeah, go ahead and remove that. See, I'm freestyling this job, so it ain't like I'm going in any type of order. Your order may be different, but at least you get to see, you know, the whole process of this whole fucking job. So, um, excuse the poor lighting and shit, too. Hmm. Need something to drink. All right, right now, that with this little coolant hose thingy me jig that goes across the valve cover to the crossover pipe. Um, pretty much what I did was took off the uh, template bolt for that bracket. And once you get that out the way, you'll be able to move that whole 
um, pipe. Yep, see how I'm taking off the, the little clamp and removing it from the crossover pipe. And you'll be able to move that out the way and I already got that to the side. So underneath that crossover pipe, there's another bracket for that whole wire harness and shit. Um, this is 10 millimeter bolt. Um, you can sneak it out. It look like you can't, but because the bolt may be too long, but you can. So just take your time, two fingers, you'll be all right. Next, I'm taking off the upper radiator hose. Make sure your engine is cool, not hot. So that way you won't have a lot of coolant spilling out and shit won't be shooting out at you. Make sure you got a catch can underneath too. And this tool I'm using is to um, break free um, pretty much a radiator hose removal tool. You can get that from Harbor Freights. Literally costs like 10 bucks. It's really cheap. So I'm breaking it free because it is sealed tight on it. And like I said, make sure your engine is cool, or cold, or warm, not hot. Just so you won't have a lot of cooling coming out. And for safety reasons, you don't want shit shooting at you. Because a few weeks ago, I burnt my arm. I had like a first degree burn. And it's still healing. Lucky it wasn't more. And it shot at my face and shit. So that's another story for another day. All right, see how I got that whole harness off to the side, a little cooling hose. You tuck that anywhere. And I got rim now. Now still a bracket, I gotta take off. I just took off the connector. I'm gonna finish taking it off now that I have rim because the harness is out the way and the more so the upper radiator hose is out the way. And this job is very very tedious. It's a lot to do. It's a lot involved because there's many pieces and shit you have to take off. So just take your time. And probably watching this video, y'all like, I ain't. I'm taking this shit to the dealership. I hear you. I would if I was you. So, all right, back to the commentary. All right, so I'm um, taking off a few connectors, as you can see. And once I got the connectors off, I'm able to move the whole harness off of the valve cover. And once that's completely secured out of the way, I now have access to remove the uh, left bank valve cover. And um, I guess, what the hell am I doing? Malik, what are you doing? What are you doing? Talking to myself. Um, I don't know if I look for a tool. Okay, I guess I'm starting to remove... Uh, Around the valve cover, there are 10 millimeter bolts. Um, what you want to start with is the start with a corner of any valve cover or any side of the valve cover, and work your way across diagonally. Why, why do I have my monitor there? Oh, I think I was trying to um, unlock a fire stick. Um, okay, starting with the left corner. You can start in any corner you want, as long as you're working across diagonally. That's because you don't want to. Um, for reasons I don't want you to fuck up the valve cover on a high mileage engine. It could be from warp warpage or whatever. Just take it off evenly, uneven. I mean, in a crisscross pattern. That's what I meant to say. I'm sorry. So, got all four corners out. Now you can free to take off any bolt you want. Now I'm still kind of going in a crisscross pattern a little bit, but. Like I said, get the four corners first diagonally and you'll be good. And my voice is really dry, like I'm kind of parched. Is that the right word? Maybe get something to drink. I think I'm going to pause the video. Hold on, hold on real quick. Let me get something to drink. Never mind. Yeah. It could wait. I don't feel like stopping. I want the edit to be straight process and shit. I ain't got time for that shit. Oh, what am I doing? Um, I'm taking off the um, fucking um, coil. No, I don't do that. I'm tripping. Um, 10 millimeter bolts. That's near where the coil packs will be. Like a set of six of them. And then I think I got to get the ones that's down by the exhaust manifold. Yeah. 
Yep. This child was a little, little pain in the ass. He makes some good money off this. I mean, I make some good money off this. It's pay, it's pays like four or five hours and shit. It's easily at a dealership between three, between three and five hundred bucks labor, easily. Really, I could do this shit in a matter of a. If I was to do it again, straightforward, no stopping, no filming, no not worrying about YouTube or just worrying about getting my money. Shit, two hours tops. And you doing this in your driveway? I know it's gonna take you a lot longer. So I think I'm working. I got one more bolt to take off. I don't know if that's the last one. It could be. I'm not sure. Oh, I think I got to get the top ones. See, like I said, I did this job. I didn't do it in order. So that's why it's kind of like, what the fuck am I doing? Because this is a fucking... Last week, and just bear with me. So it looked like I'm searching around a vial cover because I think I got all the bolts off. And now, um, yeah, I think I'm ready to pry it off. Got all the bolts off. I'm going to, uh, took some uh, shop air with an air blower. Blew all of the debris off. You should have did this before you started the job, but I wanted to make sure I got all my harnesses and everything out of the way. Make sure you don't get no degree in a spark plug tube. If you do, be sure to blow air in it. Do not hit full blast air in the spark plug tube hole. Hit it lightly. Take a shop vacuum and suck it out. Whatever. Man, if I were you, I would get some type of bungee cord or zip tie to move that connector out of the way. But if you got help in hand with you, which I hope you do to make the job a lot easier. Make sure you, you get your buddy to move the uh, harness out the way. And just going to pry up in a corner just a little bit. Do not fuck the service up. That's It's warpage. So be careful once you get it to budge up, lift up, and it'll come straight out just like that real easy. Okay, I took the... Did I take the gasket out? No, the gasket is still on the cylinder head. So I'm pulling that out right now. Make sure you do not get any degree, I mean debris or dirt, whatever, anything fall inside of the cylinder head or that's your ass like real shit. And I ain't responsible for that. So cut that horseplay, playing shit out. Make sure no flying parts and shit is, be careful. All right, so what I'm doing is I took a clean rag, and the surface, surprisingly, wasn't that bad. Um, I guess because it's a rubber gasket or whatever, didn't leave, didn't really leave anything behind when it peeled off. So it was very easy to clean, make sure the surface is smooth. I went over this shit like at least three to four times. Each time you go over it, flip the rag over, use a, a clean side, use a new rag if you had to, and also um, be sure to spray some type of cleaning solvent like fucking brake cleaner on it on a uh, the rag or whatever you're using to clean the surface and um you should be good make sure you get the the, the uh surfaces for the uh spark plug uh seals and shit so i'm searching around making sure i'm good i'm gucci I look like i'm good yeah i always double check make sure nothing fell inside where the cams are like i said that's gonna be yes all right so Taking some um, gum cutter, you can use brake cleaner, whatever. All alcohol based, alcohol based, same thing. Um, just clean around the grooves where the valve cover like lie in, and I'm cleaning it off real good. And like I said, it wasn't nothing left behind when the I took the valve cover off. Like nothing, I had to like use a die grinder and a pad, a cookie pad to clean off. It was like fucking smooth, like bare. So. Made my job a lot easier in this 
engine has like 116,000 miles on it, if I can remember. So I got shop air. I'm blowing. Um, to, yeah, basically cleaning up the fucking, you know, shit I sprayed on it in the dirt. When everything dry. To make sure you hit that real good. Alright, so make sure you get your gasket in there. Be careful because there are two different gaskets that look the same, but it's not. Um, you have to match them up slowly. Follow the grooves. It's like tracing or f some type of fucking puzzle or whatever when you're using school, whatever. You get my drift. Just put it the fuck on. I swear to God, a two year old can do this. So make sure it's pressed in. And it's little, little notches on the side of the the gasket if you notice basically it locks in the groove pretty much so just push in don't like press in hard as fuck but just push in gently and just go around it at least like i'm gonna go around it like fucking five to six times just to make sure it's in and don't forget the uh spark plug um tube seals the gasket for that Yep, see, I'm going around and I'm slowly pressing it in. All right, so I'm good on that. So you want to take some RV sealant. I use black, just the, the, the like the super, like the, I think it's ultra black. Um, and maximum shit, whatever. And what the timing cover is, there are splits. So put some um, RV sealant in between the timing cover and the valve cover gasket is a split. Just... Don't worry about why you should do it. Just put some fucking gasket. Make it there. All right. Ultra black RTV sealant. Or you could use ultra gray, but use ultra black because that's the best. So I'm ready to go back in. And I got a helper again to move the wire harness out of the way so that my installation can be a lot cool. And if you're having problems with the gasket keep falling out, just peel it back and put some um, RTV sealant in between. Just like how I did, and press down on it. It helps it stick. So that way your gasket won't fall apart. And I should be good. I think he asked me a question. I'm not sure. Whatever. Alright, so... I got trying to get him to lift up the uh, whole harness. And see how I got all that fucking room? Because he did that. Makes my installation a lot fucking easy. Alright, so double check. Make sure you get to get this in. Be careful. And you need steady hands. So if you're on drugs... And you got like a little a shaking problem. This ain't the job for you. Alright, so there are little dial pins on the valve cover too that line up on the head. You'll notice that it's in when it seats fully all around flush. So sometimes you got to kind of move it around. But eye up the holes where the... The 10 millimeter bolts go for the, the valve cover and you should be all right. But like I said, there are the dial pins to align the valve cover to the cylinder head. Next, I got an inspection mirror, whatever mirror you got, whatever, cell phone, whatever. Let's check around the uh, valve cover. Make sure the gasket is properly in and not sticking out because um, some cars are sensitive. You start the motherfucker up. And it'd be it'll throw a lean cool BMWs for an example, Ford two, um, uh, or it, it you have a fucking major oil leak, like it'd be smoking and like it's just all kinds of fucking shit. Whatever, just make sure the gasket it, it's it's in properly. And I think I'm ready to get my uh, ten millimeter bolts in.
I should have sped this video up on some real shit because, you know, like, I literally want to get up and go to the fridge to get something to drink, but, yeah, um, I'm not going to do that to y'all because this is a long ass fucking video and I'm not trying to like chop a section of the video up just to have a steady scene or pause it or whatever so I can go get something to drink and get time for this shit. Matter of fact, I'm going to do it real quick. Y'all can fuck away. All right, got my Gatorade. I'm Gucci. Let me sit this down. Sit down. Phone down. All right, so I'm tightening up the gasket. Well, the valve cover. I'm using an electric impact of three eighths, and I am not hammering it down. I'm using it with light, like light torque, not going ham at like low speed. So, um, you most likely you'll be using fucking hand tools, but see how you removed it. The same way you remove them, same way you install them. So make sure you get that crisscross pattern going on, and you straight. So yeah, I'm starting with the corner. Mind you, I'm not hitting it with full speed. It's low speed. I'm drinking this Gatorade too. The uh, the Glacier Freeze, the Gatorade Frost. Oh man, that was great. I needed this. All right, next, I'm done the valve cover job on that bank. So next, I'm taking off the intake boot. We're working on the passenger bank, taking off the intake boot that from the airbox to the um, upper plenum. And um, what am I doing? Has another fucking hose connected to it, so I end up leaving it to the side. Took off the airbox, the mass airflow sensor connector. Disconnect that. Looks like there's some. No. I don't know what the hell I just did a second ago, but whatever. So put the little, um, like I said, was another hose connected to the uh, elbow that goes to the plenum. So I left it inside of the air box. So looks like I'm taking off a uh, uh, a hose that was stayed down with a 10 millimeter bolt bracket. And look like I'm looking for some needle nose pliers to remove this uh, clamp. Yep. Get that hose out of the way. These hoses are a pain in the ass, so sometimes you got to work them. I think this one ended up ripping on me, but it was enough slack for me to just cut it flush with a razor and then just push it back on and clamp it. So you might have this problem, but it was literally stuck to the nipple, and I had to, like, literally, like, fucking cut that bitch off. See, I was still stuck on it. You might not have this problem though. To avoid this problem, you should always like lube the inner part of the hole, uh, hose with like the uh, some type of lubricant, transmission fluid, power steering fluid, engine oil, um, whatever. Antifreeze if it came down to it. I'm not being an asshole. No, don't use that. Some type of lubricant, you should be good. Don't use brake fluid. Because it seemed like brake fluid eats through everything. Alright, what I'm doing, what am I doing, what am I doing? Okay, uh, looks like at the bottom of the uh, throttle body, there is coolant hoses that go into the uh, throttle body. Um, I'm taking it. Uh, the clamp, I'm moving that out the way, and um, make sure you got a catch can underneath to get the coolant that's going to be leaking. So I took off one hose, and uh, the second hose, I can't really get to that clamp. So what I ended up doing was removing the uh, throttle body that's held in with four 10 millimeter bolts. And then I was once I moved the throttle body out the way, I was able to get the uh, 
that uh actually I think I put the clamp back up. Yep. And I'm like I said, removing the throttle body. Four ten millimeter bolts. And I think two nuts. More so bolts. I, I, I did this job a while ago. I really don't fucking remember. A while ago to me is a week ago. Cause I done worked on a million cars since then. Alright, so um Move that out the way. Be careful. There's a paper gasket on a throttle body. Um, if you want, you can get an intake manifold gasket kit. You don't have to because I didn't have a problem with the gaskets. And the plenum gasket is like fucking metal, I think. So, you good. I mean, aluminum. Alright, so I think I checked underneath to make sure I'm catching the coolant. Because I hate cleaning up like fucking messes bad enough i make a mess as is so see i was able once i got the dry body out the way i was able to get the uh the the hoses for the uh uh fucking throttle body the hoses that go to the throttle body so i'm still working them off Let me get some more to drink. Where my shit at? All right, still working off the hoses. Mind you, it's a pain in the ass. That's why I said this job is tedious. But it's the whole time of you being careful, and it's very critical that you be careful so you won't get in any trouble, ruin any parts, and you got to run back and forth to the parts store. You want this job to be straight process, and this job was straight process for me. All right, so um, who the fuck is talking? I hear somebody in the hallway. I'm in an apartment complex. Um, okay, so I'm working off the uh, connector for the uh, throttle body. And um, be careful. Don't do what I did. I kind of dropped the uh, throttle body down on the uh, engine cover, but whatever. So got that out the way. So um, now... Um, what I'm doing is, uh, okay, they're disturbing me now, so I'm about to go in the hallway and tell them shut the fuck up. Looks like I'm removing off uh, a hose. I think it was that hose that connect to the uh, intake boot. Yeah, that's what it looks like. So take that off because that goes into the intake plenum. That one was a little pain in the ass to come off. Oh, no. I'm good. I had to really tug it. Take off some connectors. There's one connector right there. And there's going to be a couple brackets you want to be removing held in with a 10 millimeter bolt as well. It's a lot of 10 millimeter bolts. Now, your order, they all look alike. So, some of them long, some of them short. Either way, it's 10 millimeter bolt. This, this job is semi dummy proof. So. Okay, so removing the brackets. All right, still working the brackets off. It's like that's all you doing is just spending time removing shit just to get inside something. They dress this engine up with a bunch of bullshit. That's what I don't like about cars nowadays. So I like me an old American V8 engine. Wouldn't have this problem. Well, not an old American V8, but I'll take a LS3. I'll take a LS2 and a LS1. And we're going to be talking about this 5.3 build I'm going to be doing soon. Oh, uh, what am I doing? Cause I'm getting sidetracked. I'm taking off this bracket. It's another bracket. We're removing. You want to put that bracket off to the side. No need to explain what type of bracket it's for, cause it's self-explanatory. So um, now I can move that harness 
off to the side. Now I have access to my upper intake plenum uh, bolts. I think there are six or five. I'm not sure. I don't care. Uh, what am I doing? Because they look like that little, um, look the valve for the runner look like a vacuum. The little fucking valve, the diaphragm bullshit. It's a connector for it. Um, pretty much what you're going to do is you, I had to climb in. You don't have to climb in. Whatever. It's an SUV. I had to climb in. And um, I just, it's easier access from the back from this angle to get that connector out. That light is too damn bright. At least you're able to see what I'm talking about. And someone was already in here before previous. I don't, I'm not saying when. At some point in his life, somebody put a zip tire around a connector, and I had to take that the fuck off. Well, I cut. End up cutting it off. And there was a a little um, a little clamp on a hose that you could uh, like pinch with your fingers. That's behind the uh, plenum, if you can see. I ended up uh, moving that clamp. I, I moved it back on like my two fingers. That's how soft it was. And um, wait, what am I doing? Okay, I can't really see. I'm sorry. I think I just cut that zip tie. Now I'm working on getting that hose. As you can see, what I'm, that's what I'm doing. That's what I was just trying to explain to you. So I moved that clamp all the way back. And I thought I was going to move it from the plenum, but I end up taking it off from the fire end, the firewall side, not the plenum side. So that's why I had confused myself that. So now I'm taking off the, the bracket that keeps the uh, manifold um, stayed it help this helped support it in place it was a 14 millimeter bolt don't mind my junky setup but I gotta clean up whatever I'm working okay so I think I'm ready to take the bolts for the intake plenum I really love that light. That's my little cool snap on light. I paid 60 bucks for it. I think I'm going to get me two more. That snap on, snap on impact, um, three eighths um, impact gun I'm using. That one, it came with two batteries and a charger. And that one ran me like at least like 430, 450. It was a lot of money, yes, but it was worth it. So I can take off uh, tires with that too. I try not to because I rather use a real impact gun. I don't want to fuck my my gun up doing something big. Like you get what I'm saying. So I'm working off the back. Mind you, it's, it's like five to six bolts and nuts. I'm not sure, but it's common sense at this point. Damn, okay, I only got like three minutes left in this video because I'm tired of fucking talking. And this voiceover is going to be over, and I do have an outro as well. I'm not showing you how to do this bank gasket because I showed you how to do the left bank. So once you get this plenum off, everything is down fucking hill. It's cake work. It is the same process as doing a fucking left bank. And y'all lucky I'm doing this shit before I'm supposed to be going to work. Don't use no air impact for uh, aluminum shit like um, valve cover gaskets, intake manifolds, intake manifold plenums because the vibra the torque and the vibration will crack it. I use electric impact because it's soft torque. That's what I like about electric impact. So that came off smooth. Slide that down. And what am I doing? 
Uh, but you gonna say hi to YouTube? But you, you gonna say hi to YouTube? No, but I'm recording. I'm recording right now. We got the record going on right now. All right, real quick. Well, hold on, boo, real quick. But um, all right, you. All right, let me talk to my my, my subscribers. But hold on. All right, YouTube. Let me bring the camera over more so y'all can see we can be in tune. Listen, I was able to finish the job. Job was a little pain in the ass. I got this bank and took off the manifold plenum, as you can see. I even showed you guys how to fucking do it. It's fucking simple and shit. I mean, um, it's a tedious job. If you're doing the scene driveway, it's going to take you at least like four or five hours tops. Total time wrenching I spent, I ain't no more than three hours and shit. So that was good. Show you how to clean the surface, how to fucking make sure you put RTV sealant in between where the timing cover is, those splits in between the uh, cylinder head. I even show y'all that. And um, there was no need to show you guys how to fucking install everything because installation is reverse of removal and shit. So if you got a fucking problem, rewind the fucking video and shit. Real fucking simple. So that's that. And um, yeah, it ain't nothing to fuck else to fucking talk about. So let, let me let me put let me put. Hold on, babe. I'm not done. All right. So let me finish fucking up my food so I can get the fuck out of here and shit. And then um, I clean up of course. I might got an exhaust video for y'all and shit on how to install exhaust pipes. Um, the down pipe actually coming from the uh, the upper cat from off the manifold. Possibly tomorrow. I don't know. It depends how I fucking feel. But for the most part, I got a fucking video. So do me a favor, hit that like button. Make sure you're subscribed. And uh, boo, say bye to say bye to YouTube. Bye. They can't hear you. Say it. She said bye. All right, but um, yeah, that's that. So I'll see you guys whenever, motherfuckers.